Under the Pack West Spotlight with Raphael Hilario from the Capilano Blues men's volleyball team. Hi, Raphael. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you? How how are you holding up through the whole pandemic and this fourth and fifth and tenth wave that we've been we've been having? <laughs> um, I think I'm doing well. You know, um, I think it was a good time. You know, to kind of get to know my body better. You know, like how to react. So I think. I really had like a preseason for the first time in Canada. So I think uh, I had like enough time to prepare myself for the upcoming season. So I know it's been hard, especially when you have like practice, no practice, practice, no practice, you know, so like that time, like on and off the court. But hopefully I think now things are getting better. And, you know, like now we have to have time and we have the chance to have like a full season. It's interesting that you bring up, you've had an interesting path to get to Capilano, correct me if I'm wrong, but coming from Brazil, you went to Toronto, and then you went to Cap, won a national title, then COVID happens, and then you're back at Cap. So it must be a a whirlwind for you. Yeah, I think that um, our first home, the home home opener against Camosun, I think that when the guy was announcing that was basically like 600 days without like having, I don't know, Official match. Uh, I think we didn't realize how long it took to finally get to like game day again. And yeah, like we played nationals, and it it, it, it felt great. Of course, it felt great because of course, like we won nationals. Sure. Like you're national champion, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's kind of weird because you didn't have fans at uh, um, the facility, and. We are kind of like waiting for the moment, you know, like to go back to cap, have like a banner, like raising and everything and see like all the guys. And we all like saying like, oh, my God, like I I was waiting for the moment for so long and we kind of like didn't know how we would feel about it. You know, like I remember like I was talking to Jacob and it wasn't you know, like even like being like a, it was an exhibition game against CBC, like a first exhibition game for the season. And we all so excited, you know, we was like, we were packing our bags, like, am I forgetting anything? Like, am I forgetting my shorts? Am I forgetting my knee pads? Am I forgetting like socks? Because it was such a long time without having like that feeling, you know, like the anxiety for game day. But I think right now we are pretty happy that we are back and finally have your games. Do you feel like you're still defending champions of nationals? Because like you say, it was 600 plus days to play. <laughs> like, does it wear off? No, it doesn't. Okay. To be honest, it doesn't. Um, I see like posts from other teams, you know, and they keep like commenting like the reigning, you know, like United Champs, the reigning like Pac West Champs. So it kind of like reminds us from last season. Of course, we have like that year gap. So it feels weird. Like they've always joked about it. Like I think like you're probably like the team who has like defended like the Nationals and Pac West like championship for the longest time, you know, because <laughs> basically like two seasons. But yeah, I think like we still have that feeling, you know, like of being like the defending national champions. And I think it's great. Of course, he, we carry some responsibility, um, you know, because I think like after such a great achievement, people kind of expect you to keep on the same level or sure. even better, right? So, but I think that that's something that a team has uh, literally like deal with that like pretty well, I think. Like we're not, we know like every season is a different story. Every roster is different, so whatever happened in the past already happened in the past. Of course, it's great to have those banners at cap, but we want to build like a different story for this team, for sure. Sure, and your team is different, and because of the long layoff, you've had some graduations. You have a brand new head coach. It's so that expectations almost aren't fair for you guys because yes, you're national champs and you want to continue to play well, but there were so many days before you actually played again. It's so different, isn't it, this year? Yes. Uh, yeah, and you mentioned about, like, a, having a new coach. So we come from basically two years. I came from two years with Dave. The guys basically three. And now we have, like, a new head coach. And, of course, it takes some time to adapt to his game style, you know, yeah. like, his mentality. So I think it was a, has been, like, a season with, a, like, a lot of adaptations for the team, you know, like new coach and COVID, like new schedules, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes are not able to have the facility open, 
short practice time because they have to clean the whole thing, like sanitize the whole facility. So I think I would say it has been like a season of like a lot of adapt, uh, adapting a lot for this yeah. season. And Mother Nature throws a little curveball at you too, and you, you lose. Games. You've played one match in the month of December. Like, I know. This is another <laughs> long, long layoff for this team. Yeah. Um, we played one match. Last match was like against VIU, December 3rd. And now we are playing next week, hopefully, if nothing changes, we're playing next week against Carter. Going to be, I was. I was talking to my dad last night, like, I think it's going to be like an Inter's match, you know, like yeah. a team who only played three matches for the first half and our team who played like the last game, December 3rd. So it's a long time. Uh, it's kind of weird because we have final exams. So technically we don't have like a lot of time to prepare ourselves. Um, we had some, couple, we had like a couple practice during holidays, like right after Christmas, like that break between Christmas and New Year. Right. We already back to the gym, like January 4th. So we can practice like four, fifth, and head to Cotter. Because it's always an adventure, like going to Crown Brook for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, our expectations, like I think we need to, rec- need to recognize that we might not be at our best at that time, you know, like especially like after like a long break. But we all know like the other team might also struggle. So, but I think that time is more about like having fun and, mm-hmm. you know, like trying to forget those things and, just playing some volleyball. The timing must be off though, right? With you and the setters and well, everybody, not just you, but the timing, the cohesiveness of the team, when you don't play for so long, then all of a sudden you get thrust back into a match and, and Cotter will be the same. They, like you said, they've only played three matches. So how long do you think it will take you to get back into the, the swing of things? Uh, will it take a match? Was, will it take a point? No, I, I mean, I think like the set of here connection is something that takes a while sometimes, like even a season, you know, like to happen. Um, I remember like last season, I played Simon, one of the greatest sure. setters in Canada, Simon Friesen, and it took a while, you know, like I would say like even to like the final of the season, we got like that, like that perfect connection, which, which is, which is fine. Right. But I think like it takes time, of course, like I would say, uh, the first weekend might not be like a great volleyball. And like we got and then after that I'm gonna have like another week of practice. So like I'm gonna have like more time, you know, to connect with the setters. Um, but I feel like volleyball is always trying to it's like we are a team, right? So we know we won't, we won't be like passing dimes to the setters. We know like the setters won't be like side like perfect ball like hundred percent of the time. So it's always about like helping like the other guys, you know, like so the ball is not good, like try to fix it, you know, like that's all, also something that Mike has tried to implement in the team, you know, like being smart and trying to recognize when it's like the perfect time to go like a hundred percent like for a ball or if like just time to you know like try to play some transition. So yeah, I think I would say like maybe one, two matches and hopefully I think what really matters is trying to get like the highest level in February. Yeah. But that's now that's the physical part of the game. What about the mental part? And for all student athletes that have had such a long layoff and dealing with COVID and wearing a mask, not wearing a mask and, and getting vaccinated, not getting like the mental aspect of the game and being a student athlete and just wanting to play and you just can't. What's what's that like been for you? Um, I think like during COVID when we didn't have a season and right now, during this holiday break, I try to have a mental reset. Yeah. Um, I feel like after VIU, uh, we played that day, that night, and then you have, I had like three finals, basically like almost in a row. So after my last finals, I I was with Lenny, the middle blocker, Kisarek, and I was just like, Lenny, I, let's have lunch. Let's chill, because I don't want to think about volleyball. I don't want to think about school. I know I'm working tomorrow because I also enjoy to work a little bit more during holiday. So I just don't want to think about volleyball. I just don't want to think about school right now. You know, like I want to have a mental reset. My dad was like texting me like, hey, did you watch that match? Hey, the World Championship is happening right now. It's like, dad, I'm not watching volleyball, yeah. okay? I'm avoiding volleyball right now because I have, I would say, not, not even three weeks to be back to my like, that's like busy routine with volleyball school and also, you know, like work like on the weekend. So 
I always enjoyed that time to have like a mental reset, try to watch some Netflix, some shows, you know, like hang out with some friends, you know, like try to not think about like the things that I've been doing for the last three months, like nonstop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like that that time I enjoyed for the mental reset. Did it work? Did lunch work and did you get a chance to yes, reset? Yes, uh, I was fresh. Yeah, I think like yeah. I slept for like four hours after. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had three. I finally had a chance. Out. Yes, I finally had a chance to really rest my body. You know? So yeah, it's important too. Are you a New Year's resolution guy? Do you make a resolution and do you stick with it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean... Sometimes, you know, like we, we never know what the future is about to bring to us. So, um, especially nowadays, <laughs> I know <laughs> you don't even know what's happening tomorrow, right? You can yeah. be able to do like a lot of things, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, no, you guys are not allowed to do that anymore. So, I prefer to think like one day at a time, one step at a time, and don't have like a lot of expectations. Yeah. Well, listen, it's good to see you. Thanks for doing this, and uh, get ready for a very intense and busy schedule in, <laughs> in February as you make your way to the PacWest Championships. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Ryan. Happy holidays. <laughs>